Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to be talking about debugging it uh, on Perlmutter. Um, it's one of the more difficult topics when you're trying to port your code. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the tools and uh, how you can use them with the different types of programming models and the different types of uh, hardware that we have. Um, the most common ones we have are DDT, which is used by a majority of our users, and TotalView. These are kind of full-fledged GP, uh, GPU, CPU debuggers that pro, uh, use a bunch of different uh, programming models. Uh, their graphical user interface, um, a lot of different ways of doing things. Um, there's some specific uh, tools from NVIDIA, uh, CUDA GDB, which is just a GDB with an attached uh, CUDA extension. Um, and then there is a cute sanitizer, uh, which does a couple of different things for uh, finding memory related bugs. Um, there's also a GDB for HPC, which is a GDB that's meant for doing GDB like things but against parallel programming models. And uh, there's a Valgrind for H HPC, which is again, similar where it's taking Valgrind and applying it towards um, finding memory related bugs and stuff like that, but against uh, parallel programming. And there's also a, a special series of tools called STAT and ATP that are related that are good for finding crashes and deadlocks because they take a look at where your program's at um, according to its backtrace. And then they kind of merge the backtrace and show you where you're going. Um, but before you start debugging, there's a few things you're gonna to wanna to do. Um, you're gonna to want to set up a remote connection. Everybody's kind of talked about this, use no machine. It's a better performance than a traditional X11 forwarding. Although both DDT and TotalView have their own options for this. Um, you need to compile your program so that you're generating debugging data. And typically you'd like to disable your compiler optimizations. Um, so I put the options in here for how you want to do that with C and Fortran. And then with uh, CUDA, there's the host options, which are dash G and dash O0. And then the capital G is what turns on the, uh, the device um, debugging uh, information for CUDA the dash capital G, excuse me. Um, you need to set up your environment in a way so that you can create core files. So you need to tell your shell that you want to be able to create core files of an unlimited size. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to create core files. Um, and you want to tell your programming models that if they find an error if they, or they're going to abort, go ahead and dump a uh, core file as well. Um, a special notice on these on the Cray tools, especially, is that they use something called Cray CTI, which is the common tool interface. This helps them uh, work with use common code to work with job launchers such as Slurm, and uh, it's tied into a lot of these tools. So you need to have the module loaded, and for our particular use, you need to be setting this environment variable. CTI, WLM, implement, IMPL, which is the CTI workload manager implementation. And in this case, we're using Slurm. Um, here's how you kind of allocate your nodes for debugging. Everybody's kind of talked about this as well. You wanna use your CPU, you make sure to set the constraint for CPU, same with GPU, and then you're gonna to wanna to use interactive or debug depending upon how long you need the node for. Um, and here's a link here to the limits and charges that you can use for setting up QoS on the allocations. First one we're going to talk about is called DDT. It's a distributed debugging tool. Uh, it supports a bunch of different parallel programming models like MPI, OpenMP, OpenACC, CUDA. It supports Python, C, Fortran, C++. Uh, originally, it was developed by a company called Alinea. It's now owned by a company called ARM that develops processors. Uh, schematics and licenses out processor information, um, but they do develop software as well. Um, and that's one of the reasons that they picked up DDT. Um, it has a remote client that you can use again, instead of doing the X11 forwarding or the uh, remote session. Um, basically you wanna just module load ARM Forge and then run DDT against the program. There's some extra documentation here, um, but I'm gonna just kind of show you some screenshots of 
what DDT looks like here. Um, so once you open it up, it kind of gives you the option to either run or attach to some kind of program or uh, uh, service. Um, you can open up a core file you have if you like as well, or you can manually launch the back end um, that's using some of the remote launch stuff is there as well. This is what it kind of looks like if you're going to launch itself, uh, launch yourself rather than uh, attached to something running. It shows the application, it gives you the uh, slurm arguments, and then there's a bunch of other uh, memory information or, and uh, programming model information that you can enter um, in order when you start your uh, debugging session. Uh, here's what the kind of default UI looks like with an MPI uh, code. Um, you see off to the left that it kind of breaks up the file or in the the source code into different functions. It looks like kind of your run of the mill IDE. You know, has the line numbers on the right side, allows you to check the stack on the right side, gives you the source in the middle. On the left, it's showing you the current stacks and it gives you some input other tabs there that for input, breakpoints, watch points, trace points, and logging. Um, shows the uh, processes on the top and it gives you a bunch of buttons at the top for doing navigation, like stopping your program, starting your program, stepping through, things like that. Um, here is some stuff where it's also using a CUDA kernel. And you can see at the bottom, the stack has the uh, has a few additional things that allow for kernel speci or, uh, CUDA specific um, functionality. Uh, here's some more uh, specific information on how and where everything kind of works. You see you got your processing entity to control at the top, navigation as we talked about before. You can right click on a variable within the uh, list in the middle and that'll give you the information, give it the spark lines. At the bottom, you can evaluate expressions based on whatever the current data is. And then there on the left, you can see the stack frame. Here's some more of the specific CUDA type features. You can see um, the GPU devices and the image on the right, the kernel progress um, on the left, like where it's in progress for on the device and the uh, CUDA stack in relation to the C stack as well. Um, another alternative to this is Total View. Um, this is a similar system. It just has a few different features. Supports a lot of the other same stuff. It was developed by a different company, but now it's owned and developed by Perforce. It has two different options, a remote client that you can download, as well as a remote connection that can uh, you can use. You just module load total view and run that. And you can also get more information from both our docs, their docs, and the man page. We also have an upcoming training session. I believe that that is tomorrow. Yep. Um, for uh, for total view, if you're interested in more training, click on the link there at the bottom, and you can sign up. Uh, it has two different interfaces because apparently people don't like new things. Um, so the first one here is, is a kind of a view of their newer interface and what everything looks like. Um, again, the similar features to what you would expect from uh, an ID or a debugger, um, very similar to what is in uh, DDT. You see your processes and kind of where they are at in the stack on the left. You have your source listings in the middle. You have some action points and bookmarks down at the bottom left. You have your loggers, your command line, and your data on the bottom. The right side, you have variables and their value. And you have the call stack in the upper right. Here is the classic interface, as they call it. Um, it's a very older X11 interface, um, but a lot of people are very used to this, and so they like to use it. Um, here you have, again, some uh, pointers to different features in here, um, where it is uh, based on the GPU and the CPU. You have some different focus areas. You have the threading at the assign uh, positive thread IDs at the bottom. You have ways to select MPI tasks to uh, set your breakpoints and your threads at the bottom. 
You have the source code listing. Again, you can see the value or dive into it when you mouse over uh, in the middle there on the source code. Uh, you have a window off on the left that shows the state of the MPI tasks and where everything is at. And you have a stack frame and stack trace uh, in the upper middle. Next one we're going to talk about is a uh, CUDA for the GNU debugger. This is an NVIDIA tool. It's basically an extension to GDB that supports uh, CUDA programs. So you can use it just like you would use GDB, except that it also has some CUDA options where you can just type in help CUDA and it will uh, get you some more information on what to do there. Uh, there's uh, docs here um, that you can see from NVIDIA. Uh, it doesn't do other types of programming models. It just uses CUDA. Uh, right now it doesn't do anything like MPI or OpenMP that I know, or MPI or uh, other big models. It may also do OpenMP, I'm not, I don't remember. Um, here's another one called Compute Sanitizer that was originally called CUDA Memcheck. This is a drop-in replacement. I believe they're using the type of sanitizer stuff that you would find in either LLVM or uh, Valgrind. Again, developed by NVIDIA, use dynamic instrumentation at compile time. Um, does kind of a S run compute sanitizer and you pop in the tool that you wanna use and use the program. They have a mem checker uh, for race checker, initialization checker and a sync checker. I'm sure they're gonna add more checkers as they, uh, go along um, based on their tooling and based on what LLVM probably produces. And there's some more uh, documentation on how to use this tool here at the bottom. Uh, GDB for HPC, uh, this is another great tool. Um, this doesn't directly support GPUs. It is an extension to GDB that supports just other parallel programming models. You just module load GDB for HPC and you can then run it and launch your apps. Um, not only can you launch apps from in it, you can also attach uh, as well. So I'll show you an example here. Here we've already allocated um, the nodes. And what I do is I'm launching uh, a process set named $P of eight tasks for an application called PCM. It starts up a uh, network in the background and connects all of the uh, debug servers to it. And then it sits an initial breakpoint at main um, of the of the app, and you can see p zero dot dot seven means process set zero dot seven because I named it dollar p. It's using the p there. So if I do a listing then of where I'm at based on that, you can see I get the first line of function main there. And if you do a view set of dollar p, it shows you all of the processes. So this allows you to do different types of process sets and uh, to run multiple apps and see their different communication. Uh, set a breakpoint here um, on line 31 of main. Notice that if I print out, try and print out the rank, um, which is a data entry, a uh, data point in uh, the app that it's currently set at zero because we haven't quite reached that part in the code yet. But if we get to the breakpoint there, I can print it and I can see that all of my ones are now printing out their correct rank. And that's because I passed the MPI com rank function in the listing, which I did just before MPI com size. Similarly, there's a Valgrind for HPC. Um, again, this uses a bunch of different tools to do like mem checks um, and does dynamic instrumentation and compile time. Again, this doesn't support uh, GPUs at the moment, but it supports other different types of programming models like MPI. And what it does is it kind of runs Valgrind against each of your MPI processes and aggregates the data um, into a more reasonable, readable report rather than having, you know, n tasks number of reports. It also improves on the messaging that you would normally get from Valgrind. Uh, there's a lot of documentation here, both on Valgrind and Valgrind for HPC. Um, so you can try out some of that stuff. 
Uh, sanitizers for HPC, this is a direct uh, tool from Cray again that is using LLVM type sanitizers and it's using the same idea of that. Run a sanitizer against each one of the processes, aggregate the reports, except that these sanitizers use static instrumentation at compile time rather than what the Insight or the NVIDIA uh, compute sanitizer and uh, the Cray Valgrind tools are doing. And uh, if you have a very CPU intensive application, these compile time instrument or static instrumentation at compile time are. Uh, can save you some uh, save you some time because they're going to lower the overhead due to the way that the instrumentation is inserted into the program. Um, they're like I said, they're based on the LLVM. And they support GPUs with CUDA memcheck um, and support uh, CCE and GCC. Um, again, you're just going to want a module swap to Cray at this point. Um, they do support GCC, but I prefer to use Cray for this. Um, you use the option here, F sanitize. You need to add that to your compile line. Make sure that you're sanitizing against the right sanitizer. Um, and the sanitizers here listed are for address, leak, and thread. And I put in some documentation both on the sanitizers uh, man page and the original sanitizers uh, as they are on Google. Um, so we have stack traits analysis tool. Uh, this kind of attaches to your uh, processes as they are running and tries to look for deadlocks. What it does is analyze each one of the processes and gets a stack trace or a backtrace, and then it merges them together so you can see the different places where your application might be in the code. Here's what it looks like when you're uh, allocating the nodes and you run uh, the application. You want to make sure to grab the PID from it, and then you can run stat against that PID. Um, this way, you can easily get a, you know a, a trace out against a hung application if you're having issues with that. And this is kind of what it looks like. You can see that this one has four ranks for four colon zero through three, and you can see that on main they take two paths. The first path rank zero and three go on. The second path ranks one and two go on. And you can see how they go down and where they end up at. And these represent the different types of backtraces that each one of the th uh, processes is taking. ATP allows you to do this in a more automated nature. Rather than having to start stack on its own, you can just in a module load ATP, uh, set some variables, and then once the application uh, dies or you send a termination signal to the application, it will automatically dump some stat information for you, as well as the core files uh, that it selectively chooses. It won't print out all, it won't send out all the core files. You can control which ones are sent, um, but it will send a selection based on the backtrace so you don't get a lot of duplicate information. Um, there are some optional and other things that should be noted. Uh, you can set the GDB binary to be whatever GDB version you want um, in ATP. That can be useful because internally it normally uses stat to identify the uh, backtraces, but in this case it would use GDB, which sometimes can be a little more useful. There's also for uh, Fortran and GNU, you need to make either a compiler or an environment variable change uh, to use ATP because they both use their own backtrace um information and again you just pretty much s run your program the term the app terminates or it gets a signal and you stat view the dot files that come out the dot the files that are outputted are all in dot format so you can also look at them in gnu plot or anything that supports the dot format and this is kind of an idea of what it looks like here you can see right away that something took took a fault and took a summary um, and you can see from the side here that it's ranks uh, three through seven of the eight. Uh, thank you for uh, listening and welcome to NERSC.